This is a Hot Pie Media original. I'm going to suggest that you, to fully appreciate this, I'm going to suggest that you go back, and I don't know, I want to say it was in August sometime. Um, Katie Joseph is her name, and she was a researcher at the University of Texas. Her area of expertise, and this is an academic, like she treats, this is science to her. She's not saying you're nut jobs or losers, or she doesn't get the perspective that we do. This is her research area. She went to a QAnon conference. She came on the show and she, just as she does, very scientifically and academically laid out QAnon, what QAnon people are about, how it's morphing into something else. It was fascinating and disturbing. She didn't come on and say, Man, you're right, Ward. They're a bunch of nut job jackasses. It, did, it wasn't that way at all. She explained the sincerity, which I found pretty fascinating and disturbing. She explained why the movement grows. And I believe she explained very well why more women are into the movement, because it comes from, as she said many, many times, they are coming from a sincere, initially QAnon people, the appeal is from a sincere place. They fall prey to disinformation and this concept of, well, how can we let kids be hijacked and thrown into pedophile rings? So people, she says, come to it in a very sincere way. And she explained a lot about it. If you, if you just need a good perspective, if you want to find yourself trying to be a little bit more objective and more balanced in how you view the QAnon crowd, listen to it. Listen to what she says. Now, once you get towards the end of the interview, she started describing how it got darker and darker and angrier and angrier. It's a fascinating discussion. It is a disturbing discussion. Why do I say that? Because I think it's a pretty decent bet. Now, Marjorie Taylor Greene, you could say, is a QAnon person, I guess. She's just a, a nut who does terrible pull-ups to me. Um, but this apparently is new territory. This guy, some people believe, is the guy who was in 8Chat. I think it is. Um, his name is Ron Watkins. And some people say he is Q. I don't know that answer. I don't want to know that answer. Crazy is crazy to me. The thing is, we're not just talking about a weird, far-out person running for office. We're not talking about what we think is a crazy person running for office. I think we're now talking about crazy, dangerous people who win. Win. I don't think the problem here is picking apart this guy and what he's been about and what this eight chat was about and his views and what they're about. I think he's going to win. <laughs> How about that? He's going to win. That's the issue of today. Laughing off crazy people running for office is nothing new. When they're dangerous, they kind of win. That's when it gets scary. So here's what's reported now. Uh, he's had enough. Prominent QAnon figure Ron Watkins has announced his plans to run for Congress in Arizona. Um, I don't know what the deal is with Arizona. It, even, it makes parts of Texas look sane at this point. His bid will make him the most prominent QAnon-related person to run for office in the United States, signifying how deep the far-right conspiracy-driven group has recently taken hold within the Republican Party. That, that's another byproduct of all this. Um, I mean, what, by the way, I very much fascinated and agreed with a lot of Ronald Reagan's positions and things. Um, but just think how what's happened within that party. I mean, it's not a it's not a move on tax policy. It's not a move on foreign policy. It is fully flipped on its head to be about guys like this. I don't think Trump did that. I, I don't think Trump did. You know, we're going to end up with this this because I think this guy. A lot of people think he'll win. And more, more of him will get involved. The hijacking of the party is done. It's not started. It's done. It's done. 
I don't think Trump did this. I think Trump was just hijacked like a lot of other people. He just doesn't care. I don't think he agrees with this guy. I just think he likes the fact that this guy kisses his ass. So I'm not going to blame this one on Trump. Trump's not the dangerous one. The people that follow Trump are the dangerous ones. But think about this is the party now. This is it. He's going to win. And there's going to be more. So, taking a hold of the Republican Party. It's also reported, uh, so he's released a clip. Um, Watkins was the administrator of a fringe message board, K8Kun, 8KUN, where the anonymous leader of Q posted before he resigned on Election Day 2020. So, the theory goes... Whoever was the Q guy stepped down on 2020, of course, because that's the election was stolen and pedophile rings and all that stuff. So this guy, before he stepped down, Watkins continued to actively promote voting fraud conspiracy theories on Twitter. On his Twitter account, he was banned. Um, go back and get some perspective by listening to the podcast interview with Katie Joseph. But... Just so you know, this guy, why is he running? Is he running because of taxes? Is he running because of Social Security? You know, none of that stuff matters anymore. The thing that will bankrupt this country doesn't mean jack to these nutcases. That's what pisses me off. The stuff that matters in everyday life, taxes and war, doesn't matter to these freaks. I don't care. Be a nut job all day long. All you are as a politician is an account. Solve the tax issues. Solve the war issues. Solve the legislature issues instead they're just nutcases all he cares about is the election was stolen this is ron watkins here again outside ag bernovich's office i want to congratulate our ag for proceeding on election fraud cases i also want to emphasize that we must stay vigilant and keep up the pressure both here in arizona and throughout the country to indict any and all criminals who have facilitated election fraud. President Trump had his election stolen, not just in Arizona, but in other states too. We must now take this fight to Washington, D.C. and vote out all the dirty Democrats who have stolen our republic. We must fix elections from inside the machine. I have decided to expose the dirtiest Democrat in the D.C. swamp. And some of you here may already know him as Congressman Tom O'Halloran, representing Maricopa County and District 1. What's publicly known about Tom O'Hooligan shows that he is not fit to represent the people of Arizona. And from what I've already discovered and will expose, Tom is not fit to represent anyone anywhere. After attending a recent sermon by Pastor Jeff Durbin of Apologia Church, I've come to realize that following God's word is not always the easiest route. But if we don't follow our beliefs and the founding principles of our nation, it will crumble. This must stop now. Therefore, I have decided to double down with God as my compass to take this fight to the swamp of Washington, DC. I am here to formally announce my run for Congress in Arizona district number one. Our fight has only just begun and I can't do it alone. I will need your support. Together, we will beat Tom Hooligan and under God's authority, we will take back Congress, flip the Senate and fix the presidency. They He'll win and there'll be more. I mean, that's, that's why we don't laugh it off. I mean, the guy matters. He matters to a lot of people. He matters to enough people. And frankly, it's all that seems to matter to most voters within that party now. And never once does old, uh, this old crazy man talk about taxes or tax codes or Social Security or, yeah, nah, screw that stuff. I don't, I don't think people are lying. The story is a story. Not just because he's outed and outed himself. The story is a story because a lot of people legitimately think he'll win and so will others. John McClellan is the co-founder and creator of ATX Hot Sauce in all 50 states, now in several retail outlets as well. So we're going to turn it over to the social media rock chef superstar. And we're going to walk through a few sauces and why you should buy. We've done beet heat 
So we're second in line now for the tasting. Don't forget, everyone, go to atxhotsauce.com. So here we go. All right. So this one is our smoked habanero five pepper. We smoke habaneros with um, ancho. Pasilla. Is that going to hurt? This one? No, yeah. this one's actually really, really good. Okay. This is like your traditional tapatilla, but yeah. uh, without the vinegar in it, right? And because of that fermentation process that we've yeah. talked about all the time. This one is great on sandwiches, pizzas, things like that. Uh, great on hot wings. Uh, I think you're going to really like this okay. one too, especially the smoky flavor with the adobe chipotle and the um, uh, the smoked habaneros. We actually smoked the habaneros um, before we... Uh, Does that go with the cab? This would not go with the cab. This would go with the great <laughs> Chenin Blanc, though. I knew you were going to... I teed you up with that one. Yeah, yeah. That is good. That's yeah, good. Isn't yeah. that good? It's just classic yeah. take. Uh, yes. Well, it's a new take on a classic item. Uh -huh. So it's called Smoked Habanero Five Pepper. All right, don't forget One ATX. Of my favorites. Don't forget ATXHotsauce.com. Better look out. Although I'm not quite sure he's that worried about it. I think that Mark Cuban, the billionaire owner of the Dallas Mavericks, uh, interesting guy to say the least, Shark Tank guy. Um, how he got rich is a, an amazing story, too. You talk about the dot com boom and bust, man. He struck gold and then turned it into more gold. There were people that were in that initial investment that could have, that had a chance to strike gold, decided to hang on <laughs> and lost everything. Um, it's, a, it's a remarkable story that I, I don't know how many people know much about broadcast.com and its two day run up, but it made him and I think a couple of others rich and then they got richer. And it made some people saying, well, I'm going to hang on to this because this has got a future and good night. It's a great, the whole dot-com boom and busts is, uh, there's a book I always recommend, would recommend to students too. It's called Eft Companies. Doesn't matter that it's slightly outdated. It's uh, like a lot of good business books that, there's two that I always recommend, Eft Companies. And it just, it's written by a guy who <laughs> kept working at places that blew all their money. It just, that's what he, and he wrote. In fact, he had this whole cottage industry of F business ideas and F this or that, but it's uh, it's a good one. Then the other one I always thought was great, just sort of the street sense is what they still don't teach you at Harvard Business School was pretty well done. But Mark Cuban, who has made the money and turned it into more, who dabbled in wanting to run for office and even admits it, um, which... I mean, I, I wish he did, but he wouldn't survive. He's he's learned the George Clooney thing. My life's pretty good. Why would I do that? He ultimately got scared away. But he is kind of a, um, if you think about it now, he's the one fighting with your Texas legislature. He's sort of the poster child. If I'm not mistaken, it was at a Mavericks game whenever. And they didn't play, I think they didn't play the Star Spangled Banner or something happened at the Mavericks game. I don't remember the whole story. It prompted the outrage that ended up, that led to the bill that mandates the national anthem to be played in stadiums, professional stadiums. Okay. That whatever happened with the Mavericks is what prompted that bill, that stupid bill, that stupid law. It's just, it's just stupid. Um, not, not that the national anthem is stupid, that you have to have a law that makes somebody play it. So he started that fight, and now look what he's done. He's all in. I'm going to guess that uh, Greg Abbott and the team don't touch him. Dallas Mavericks owner Mark Cuban said that he requires all of his employees to be vaccinated against COVID-19. Um. This is the same week, of course, that Greg Abbott announced that any entity, any business could not mandate their employees to be vaccinated. Here's what Cuban said. This is what I like about it. He's brutally straightforward and cocky. If you work for me, you're required to be vaccinated. I require my employees to be vaccinated unless there's a doctor's reason where they can't be. I don't want to put my kids at risk. It's your choice. It is absolutely positively up to you. But there's a consequence that comes with that. You work for me, you get vaccinated. 
You made the list. You've made the list. You're going to get it again. I believe that's his way. His very cool way of saying, bring it. Come on. Let's go. Come get me. Go ahead. Now, what's crazy is that he's in a business where there's well, there's one NBA, there's there's others, but there's one NBA player who's making a, you know become the poster child of anti-vax, which is kind of interesting. But Cuban, <laughs> he did that on purpose. He made it public on purpose, and he did it with the express reason to say, "Legislature, bring it on. Come get me. I got the money. Go ahead, come." Come find me because technically they can by the letter of the law in the state of Texas, they can start finding him because I don't know how many employees the Mavericks have players, trainers, whatever they can. They could conceivably find him for every one of them. Right. And what's cool about him is (laughs) he didn't want to do this long winded response. If you work for me, you're required to be vaccinated or you don't work for me. From the hot pie media studios in Austin, Texas, it's the Jeff Ward show. Listen at jeffwardshow.com.